day to day. Are we going to get... Listen, we're not going to get a full card in Pokédoku, but we could at least get five. Getting five would go crazy. And there's no regions on this one, so I could do this one maybe. Okay, hang on, hang on. Firefighting. Incineroar. What? He's a professional wrestler with fire in his name. Uh, Cinder Ace. This is unbelievable. What is, what is Cinder Ace? Fire Soccer? Fire First in Evolution. Oh, Fire, Fire Dragon! Charizard! Or is he flying? Oh, brother. Okay, Fighting Monotype. This is easy. Machamp. Fighting, just go with it for a second. Monotype dragon. I can do this. It's not Gyarados. He's water flying. It's not Dragonite. He's dragon flying. It's Giratina. Uh, altered? No. Nope. <laughs> Rayquaz is a flyer. Drag Gibble, Gibble, Gibble's a little dragon dude. Or is he dragon dark? Gibble. He's not, he's not dragon at all, apparently. Dragon, Dratini, dragon air. For, monotype first in evolutionary line. I think we got to go simple on this one. We'll go Rattata. Um, fire, dark first in evolution line. We will go... Tyranitar's little lad, who is called Larvitar. What? How is Larvitar not a dark type? It's rock ground? Where the hell does the, what does Bite come from when he evolves? A lot of non-dark Pokemon have that move? Bro, no, 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 no. I have a Tyranitar in Pokemon Go called Titar Dark. So that I know when I go to a raid, don't bring the other one because he's got like some rock slide shit that's useless. You gotta bring Titar Dark. Tyranitar is dark, but Larvitar isn't. Oh, brother. So he had a midlife crisis. And all of a sudden, I got to deal with sad Pikachu. Blaziken. Is Blaziken not like the evolved version of Cinder Ace? Charizard was right, but it's got to be Charizard Mega X. It's not. Cinder Ace and Blaziken are two different evolutionary lines. They're, they look exactly the same. One plays soccer and one does Tai Bo. She asked me, well, there's a room to grow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pokemon is fucked up. I'll say it. They made too many. Even people who love Pokemon are like, fuck you. Wait a minute. He's right. Maybe they should have made more than 150. Okay. So like, I'll, I'm not going to stop it at 150, but they definitely should have stopped at like 400. Because it's just getting absurd now. It should always be bound to the periodic table. So they can only add new Pokemon when they discover new elements. Because then we would not have Pokemon that are like, they don't fucking do anything. Like what the hell is Dunsparce? It's like a little piece of candy he's like a little rollo every time i see him in pokemon go i'm like what is this somebody left like a potato chip bag on the ground he's gen 2 the rot set in early brothers the rot set in early framed the movie guessing game hey 
Damn it, Pants. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. This looks like a movie from the 1970s. I don't know it immediately. 70s or 80s involves boxing in some capacity, but probably not a Rocky film, because just to be honest with you, the cinematography is too good for it to be any of the middle Rockies. Amy Adams, it's the fighter! The fucking fighter! You fucking... If you're the strongest motherfucker I ever met, one day I keep beating my brain the mush, hoping I come here and knock on your door, you're going to be in the fucking UFC. It'll be the happiest day of my fucking life. I've seen the fighter, I think. Amy Adams doesn't miss, except for season one, episode six of The Office. I don't get the bit. Um, much like Goodwill Hunting, the fighter takes place in Boston. So the bit is what if every single movie from Boston was Goodwill Hunting? Factal is broken today. The internet is a joke. Hi, Tom. I know you pooped, buddy. You pooped. I'm not losing a staring contest with my cat. That's just not going to happen. The Daily Dozen Trivia. You look very sepia today. Well, you know what? A skibbity riz to you too, fellow Zoomer. The Steelers drafted this wide receiver in the first round out of Ohio State in 2006. He was their Super Bowl XL III MVP. Okay, so this is hard for me. I know Steelers wide receivers. I know... Heinz Ward, but he was pre-2006. I know... Um, Troy Palamalu. But he was pre-2006. And then after that, they have Antonio Brown. That's all I can think of is that it's Antonio Brown. But I think that there is a gap in the... There's a gap in the... In the logic there. Wayne Gretzky? Polamalu's a safety. Who was the number two threat on the 2004 Steelers then? Someone's going to tell me. Santonio Hall. No, Plaxico Burris. Thank you, Plaxico Burris. That's who I was thinking of before he got traded to the Giants. The NFL has been funny for so long. Didn't Plaxico Burris shoot himself in the leg, bringing a gun into a nightclub and got injured for like the whole season? Yes, that happened. That's <laughs> so funny, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's like kind of not funny as well, but it's also kind of funny. The National League team tried to make a splash before the 2012 season by signing... All-Stars, Jose Reyes, Heath Bell, and Mark Beerley to big contracts. That's a gimme. National League team. Give me the Miami Marlins. Okay, that was surprising. NHL, 2006 Stanley Cup Final as a playoff eight seed. Don't fuck with me. It's the Edmonton Oilers. You don't even have to ask about that one. Since 2014, Matthew McConaughey has been in advertisements for Lincoln. Celebrity mashup. This is Kaylee Kowoku with Tom Hiddleston's face, or Tom Hiddleston's hair. That's a gimme. If they could give me, like, some tough ones, that would make my day. Often sold in malls, what is the ice cream of the future? Dippin' Dots. A spin-off to Jackass, what is Wild Boys? One of the top grossing films of 1992. Is Sister Act One. Back in the habit? Not yet. 
While this band had multiple hits, the 2018 song High Hopes tops their Spotify catalog. What is Panic at the Disco? Okay, they honestly, they got to make these a little tougher. This is getting a little bit crazy. We went eight for nine. 16% of people got Edmonton Oilers. Americans really don't know hockey, which is fine. I don't know football. But like in hockey terms, that's a given. Like the Oilers are historically cursed. They also have won like six Stanley Cups, but like in my lifetime, they're cursed. They do know candy though. That is true. Oh, yeah, I still don't know the answer for this one. And, and, I, and I never fucking will. Who's the, who was the Steelers MVP in Super Bowl XLII? It was Santonio Holmes. Oh, okay. See, I always see him as a New York Jet because I stopped watching football when I went to college. Is Devin Hester still playing? No, he retired 12 years ago. All right. All right, then. You didn't have to be rude about it. He's up for the Hall of Fame this year. Holy, good for him. One of the best kick returners of all time. They don't really seem to be busting touchdowns on uh, kick returns that much anymore. What happened, man? Reggie Bush, Devin Hester, Dante Hall. What happened? They changed the rules. They moved the kick up 10 yards. Oh, that's why it's always going out of the, the damn end zone now. I thought kickers just, you know, started using better steroids. It, I mean, it is fair. It is probably like one of the more dangerous plays in football. Dude is running at a full sprint for like 12 seconds. Well, 300 pound dudes running at a full sprint in the other direction try to bump into him. Made for some very exciting plays. Remember when Reggie Bush did a front flip over that dude? Or am I, am I, am I misremembering that? Am I getting that conflated with like a, an anime or something? He did, didn't he? And the, the Marshawn Lynch earthquake? Where he stiff-armed a dude and then like all the people within 10 feet of him fell over simultaneously? That was freaking cool, man. Football is kind of like real anime. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do, I do remember when Antonio Brown jump kicked that guy. Oh, man. This is so <laughs> good. You can, I don't know if that's legal, man. Hurdles kicks a man. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to click the, the scene button, but I'm, I'm laughing too hard. Bag key study stuff. Island. I, kitchen island. Kitchen counter. Kitchen. Yeah, hi, Tomo. Kitchen stuff, kitchen bar, bar, bar. These are all things you can put a drink on. You can put a drink on your bar. You can put a drink on your island, island atoll. What are things the United States military did nuclear bomb tests on? Island, atoll, bedroom, kitchen, study, and den. What are rooms in a rich person's house? Okay. Like, listen, we got a bedroom, we got a kitchen. I don't have a den. What is a den? A den is a living room, but just for a man. But a study, you would not catch me with a study. A study, if someone said, this is my office, I'd be like, cheers, brother. We're all crushed under the same boot. If someone said they have a, I say if someone said they had a study, if someone said they had an office, I would be like, we're all crushed under the same boot. If someone said they had a study, I would be like, okay, brother, I see you fucking 
Saltburn-ass estate. What's the difference? It's the nomenclature, brother. I'm not in a study right now. There's no studying being done down here. I'm not in a, one of those chairs that has dimples, you know? It's got like rivets drilled into it, and it's got rich red leather that's like puffed up between the rivets. This is a den at best. Okay, Tomo, please stop. This, the sparks in my ears are going crazy. Key. This is another um, island-type word. And so it's sand, it's things to do with sand. Sandbar, key, island, what are things with sand? I'm a genius. Land surrounded by water. <laughs> it's close. Dip. Things you can do with a chip. Dip, bag, stuff. What, how, a way to describe putting objects into another thing. You could cram, pack, stuff, or jam things into a bag. Fill to excess. Counter bag, sprout, dip. Beans! What the fuck you mean baked beans is number four? Okay. We got there. Hi, Tomo. Hi, buddy. Hi, please, please. Have mercy, Tomo. Have mercy. With four down, crunchy green vegetable. Nothing but net sound. Whoosh. Aristocratic. Noble. City in Ohio where LeBron James was born. Akron. This can't be right. <laughs> Quiet fan setting. Zodiac sign Libra. Lobri. Libra. Capital of Norway. You can stop pouring the water. When? Libra. Now what? Swish. Who say? Who does it say? Whoosh. What are you talking about? Woke is the word added. Snap P. 101. That's still not too bad. Bro literally said whoosh. In Canada, when you, when you sink a free throw, it says whoosh, okay? I don't know what they're putting in the water down there in America. What kind of basketballs are you using down there? Wilson's? Is Wilson the regulation basketball? See, there's your problem. We use Rollins. Rollins, they make a whoosh sound. You could go check, okay? You use Spaldings? Oh, I forget. Every, only the best for America. Of course you get the Spalding basketball. Can we... I, I have an honest question. Now that we're old, we can confirm this, right? We can use the internet. You know in gym class when they wheel out like the hopper with 35 basketballs on it? What would the fuck was going on with the basketballs where there was no grip on them anymore, and they, when they hit you, it was like a fucking medicine ball. Like, the shit weighed like 22 pounds. Like, some of them were brand new, and you could feel the, the grippers on them, and as soon as they touched the gym floor, they, like, shot back up into your hand, and you felt like Michael Jordan. But some of them were, like, they weren't even orange. They were, like, a, a rust color, like iron oxide. They, they barely bounced. You had to like heave them at the ground as hard as you could. And when they hit the, the backboard, you were worried the backboard was going to smash. This shit was from like George Clooney's Leatherhead. Tomo, you got to relax, brother. It's too much. They, they were also made of the most slippery surface known to man. You're not wrong. And they left like ink on your fingertips. Like, I don't know what was wrong with them. They were made out of like old newspapers or something like that. The original, from the original James Naismith days. Oh, Costco! Okay, okay, okay. Let me think about this one. Thirty-two ounces of chocolate caramel milk chocolate macadamia clusters. Okay, macadamia nuts, relatively expensive. 
967 grams, net weight, two pounds. Okay, now the pound of peanuts at Costco is 10.99. Macadamia nuts, much more expensive than peanuts for sure. But what would drive you crazy is that because these are not pure macadamia nuts, the per capita cost might be around the same just because of the fact that chocolate and caramel are cheaper than the, the raw nut in order to produce. Now, also, I'm just thinking as well, you got to think about auspicious consumption. People that are willing to buy this are probably willing to spend a little bit more. So I'm going to start the bidding at, I'm going to go to, I'm going to, in Canada, I think this would be $17.99. I'm going to say in America is $13.99. The dude can't be stopped. He knows groceries. You start from first principles. You, you compare it. You find its comparables. You do the mathematical calculations and it's right every time. Okay. Now tell us how many capita are in this jar. <clears throat> if I had to guess how many clusters are in this jar, D.L. Guiga, it's not that many. Here's the thing. I know it's two pounds. I, there's less than, I'm going to say there's less than 45 in that whole thing. Yeah, I see you. Just stay out of the courts. They're like 60 calories per cluster. They have done some serious science to make the most unhealthy foods of all time. I'm also going to say something that might bother you. Now, keep in mind, I love the island. I was just on Hawaii. I ate a lot of macadamia nuts when I was there. I was excited to eat macadamia nuts. After leaving Hawaii, I was like, I don't need to see macadamia nuts for a while. They're okay. But after eating a few too many, they started to taste like uh, they were made of like shaved fingernails. I'll take a cashew. I'll take a peanut. I'd probably take a macadamia nut over an almond, though. I'd take a macadamia nut over a walnut any day of the week, that's for sure. They're 110 per cluster? Holy, brother. All I'm going to say is that Subway is the best thing that ever happened to the macadamia nut which you don't get to say very often. Walnuts are delicious. Long time no see, Grandma. Did I ever tell you that I think the reason I don't like walnuts is I, we, we found it out on stream together, right? I was like, you ever notice how like one in three walnuts you open up at your grandma's house at Christmas is like green on the inside and tastes like cleaning product? And people were like, brother, those are just rotten. Those are just rotten walnuts. It's like the only time I ever ate walnuts is every Christmas my grandma would like put out a display of like nuts and a nutcracker. And then that's, I would be like, whoa, that's cool. I'm eight years old. I'd crack it open and eat it. Ew. I didn't realize lady was putting out the same nuts for like my entire childhood. I was seeing the same nut for like eight or nine years. <laughs> I didn't realize they were just decoration. I should have stuck to the, the Werther's. Should have stuck to the Royal Dutch sugar cookies, man. 2013. Open Road. The shit is Oscar bait. It's went 9x at the multiplex this weekend. Holy, let's see. Last week it was in 16th. It stars Jessica Shastain, 2013. Is this 12 years? Wait, do we, we have this? Not 12 years a slave. Um, the Help, right? The Help? No? Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. Jessica Shastain, the greatest manhunt in history. Jason Clark. 
I must be crazy because I don't know what this is. I have no clue. Reveal all hints. A chronicle of the decade-long hunt for Al-Qaeda terrorist leader Osama bin Laden after the tooth... Oh, fucking... The Hurt Locker two years later. Zero, zero dark 30. Zero dark 30. Not zero fucks given. This sounds like a Jennifer Lawrence movie. I should have known. Zero Dark Thirty, if you were there, people were going crazy for Zero Dark Thirty. Hey, when are you going to go see Zero Dark Thirty? This is around the time I found out Catherine Bigelow, A, used to be um, married to James Cameron, and B, did you know she fucking did Point Break 1991? That movie goes insane, dude. It's one of the coolest movies ever made. Not the remake, okay? Open Road Productions, open to 18 mil, starring Marlon Wayans. Whew. Genre, comedy horror. Were they still making scary movies in 2013? I feel like Scary Movie 3 was like 2003. 4 must have been like 07. 5, there's no way that shit was 2013. This must have been a different parody remake. Tagline, this shit ain't paranormal. Paranormal. <laughs> 30 nights of paranormal activity with the devil inside the girl with the dragon tattoo. Could that be it? <laughs> I don't think so. No, okay. Um, maybe it is. I'll, well, let's try Scary Movie 5. Paranormal Whacktivity. Paranormal, ex I don't think it would be Paranormal Experience. Come on, let's just reveal all hints, man. Why is this shit opening? It's a, a horror comedy that's opening January 11th. Malcolm and Keisha move into their dream home, but soon learn a demon also resides there. When Keisha becomes possessed, Malcolm, determined to keep his sex life on track, turns to a priest, a psychic, and a team of Ghostbusters for help in this spoof of all the found footage documentary-style films released in recent years. This movie is called A Haunted House. I would not have gotten that. Directed by Michael Titties. Good work on the title. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, you guys got the title for that new Marlon Wayans movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Um, 30 Nights of Paranormal Activity with the Devil Inside the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. How's that? Everyone's like, yes, yes, yes. Then, like, uh, we just got the email back from the studio. They said it's too long. They're just going to call it A Haunted House. You're absolutely right. Any movie that... Uh, David Koechner is in, is guaranteed to be ass. There's one exception, I think, and it's Anchorman 1. Uh, also, any movie that Nick Swardson is in is turbo guaranteed to be ass, and I don't think there are any exceptions. He's in Thank You for Smoking. Okay, David Koechner has two exceptions, okay? Warner Brothers. Starring Josh Brolin, 2013. Genre, crime, drama, action, thriller. Too late for True Grit. Too early for Sicario, and he wouldn't be first billed. This is a big fuck you, it's January type weekend for sure. Directed by Ruben Fleischer. Also starring Ryan Gosling. Los Angeles, 1949. Ruthless Brooklyn bar mob boss Mickey Cohen runs the show in town, reaping the ill-gotten gains from the... Okay, listen. This is LA Confidential 2. Is this... Um, wait, uh, Sean Penn. Is this... Uh, <laughs> I'm like, what's the name of that Michael Mann movie this obviously isn't? Public Enemies. 
No, okay. Weinstein Company made 125 milli, starring Jamie Foxx. 2013, Jamie Foxx is the star, made over $100 million. Ah, it's Django Unchained. Shouldn't have even needed the, the genre on that, but at least we banked some points. And then a universal movie, it didn't make... Oh my God, what is a precipitous drop-off, bro? 118 milli in week three, but it only made 10 milli in its third weekend, starring Hugh Jackman. 2013, this could be Universal. Universal means it's not a Wolverine movie. It would be a 20th Century Fox production. Universe, it's just like a year after Real Steel. It's a musical history drama. It's not The Greatest Showman, right? Isn't The Greatest Showman from like 2016? <clears throat> Tagline. Fight, Dream, Hope, Love, Thanks for Nothing. Directed by Tom Hooper, starring Russell Crowe. And and Oh, it's Les Miserables. Of course. And then, I just don't know what this is. Gangster Squad. One of the abs... Don't, don't look at this, okay? One of the worst... Uh, names and certainly one of the worst posters I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, this is a great clip for you, librarian. Whenever, like, someone posts something horrible on Twitter, one of the worst names and one of the worst posters I've ever seen in my entire life. Clip. Plus two. That was a tough one. January 2013. If I could travel back in time, I would not go back to January 11th, 2013. And um, watch any of these at the, at the multiplex, I think. And now what's behind you next to the Santa? This is um, 400 wipes to wipe down my bike after I take a ride on it. It's a big bin. It's a cylindrical, almost looks like the size of a paint bucket. You need all 400. I've entered the phase of my life where I actually like use things up and then recycle the container. Just takes a while. Okay, old ass. <laughs> you know you're getting old when you like use a pen until the ink runs out instead of just like losing it somewhere. It changed my life. As a bald man, do you wear a sweatband? Yes. If you are bald, I can't speak for those of you with hair. I usually let you speak for me. If you are bald, I would recommend wearing a sweatband. It helps out a lot because you don't have anything to catch the sweat coming off of your head. I'm finally almost at the end of a chapstick. Dude, my kid blew my mind. I went up to go to bed last night. It was like 1030. She was sitting on the floor reading a book. I said, why are you asleep, you, you insane person? And she said, Daddy, I put lip gloss on all by myself. And I went, you what? And then she like puckered her lips and she had lip balm on. And I was like, where did you get it? And she was like, the top drawer in the bathroom. And I said, what did you do with the tube? And she said, I put it back. And I was like, you're fucking three. What do you mean you put it back? Then I was like, this liar. And I went into the bathroom. She put it back. It was, it was blowing my mind. She's cracked, bro. I don't even put it back. I usually put it like right next to wherever I was when I put the lip balm on. And then I'm like, where the fuck is it? Kate, did you move the lip balm? I always put it back in the top drawer. I always put it back in the top drawer. There is something wrong with the male brain. This is another good clip for you. I know when I can't find something 
I am 95% more likely to have misplaced it than my wife. But my first reaction is always, my wife must have moved it because it's not where I thought it was. Like the logic and the emotion are not connecting. They're not speaking to each other. Yeah, because I don't move shit. That's why I'll be like, Kate, where'd you move the ketchup? And then she'll be like, I didn't touch the ketchup. You used it last. And I'm like, I don't think so. And then she's like, why don't you check where it always is? And I'm like, I just did, obviously. And then she's like, check again. And then I open it up and I'm like, how the fuck did she get the ketchup back there? I literally just looked there. Not only was I the one who misplaced it, but it wasn't even misplaced in the first place. There's something, there's something about it, man. I still haven't figured out how she does it. Emma Watson, Florence Pugh, Laura Dern. These are little women. Saoirse Ronan. Saoirse Ronan, who's also in The Lovely Bones. Candelabra. Widow, Florence Pugh, who's also in Black Widow. Okay, hang on. Hang on, I gotta think about this. Maybe we got, things are like slightly disconnected here. Mosquito DNA Park is Jurassic. It's not Bones? <laughs> what? Laura Dern. Oh, now we blew the whole motherfucker up. There we go. Russian assassin, widow, Florence Pugh. Lovely Bones, Saoirse Ronan, Purgatory, Candelabra, Teacup, Pendulum Clock, Emma Watson. I don't even know what half this shit is, okay? Little Women, Jurassic Park, Lovely Bones, Black Widow, Candelabra, Teacup, Pendulum Clock, Emma Watson. There's got to be a Harry Potter. Oh, Beauty and the Beast. Taylor's oldest time. Small to say the least. D.L. Guigo, what do you do? A selection of bad actresses. Laura Dern, bad actress. Saoirse Ronan, she's one of the most talented young actresses in Hollywood these days. Florence Pugh absolutely crushes it in Little Women, I am imagining. I've never seen it. And Midsommar, Black Widow, we won't hold it against her. And then Emma Watson, not you, Emma, sorry, not you. But Laura Dern, Saoirse Ronan, and Florence Pugh? Come on, man. Some of you haven't seen Lady Bird. Sit down, Emma. Sit down. I'm just being real with you. I don't know if she's a good uh, actress. I don't think I've ever seen an Emma Watson movie. I've never seen any of the Harry Potters. And I think after that, she was kind of like, Oh, no, wait, I've seen Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> oh, man. And I did not like it. I've seen the very one that was in that puzzle. Laura Dern is the best of the four, I'll give you that. Bro, you're really sleeping. No, I'm just being respectable here. You're really sleeping on Saoirse Ronan, bro. Lady Bird is a revelation. You got to give Saoirse Ronan some respect. Even if it did take me four years to learn how to pronounce her name. Road to Perdition. Revolutionary Road, The Road to El Dorado, The Road Mad Max Fury Road, Step Brothers, John C. Riley, John C. Riley, John C. R Brothers, <laughs> Mank. Is that, I know who this is. This is David Fincher. People versus Larry Flint, Woody Harrelson, Woody Harrelson, Natural Born Killers, Woody Harrelson, War for Planet of the Apes, Woody Harrelson. 
Fred Claus, Step Brothers, Warrior. I don't know. Movies where dudes are related. Mank, Bram Stoker's Dracula, The Dark Knight Rises. Perhaps this is uh, Gary Oldman. This is Woody Harrelson, Gary Oldman. Movies where the dudes are brothers. Movies with road in the title. Okay, theme number five. Trials, Assassins, Assassins. Uh, Batman, fictional characters. Taste this too easy in movies. <laughs> Superheroes, animated films based on a book. George Miller. Is it not Assassins? Mad Max Fury Road. I guess it's about Assassins, but weren't you there to begin with? Well, that's like four swaps for no reason. Step Brothers. Movies about Step Brothers. Comedies. Warrior. Movies about people fighting. Driving cars. Movies with cool cars. Movies with Courtney Love. Movies directed by Matt Reeves. Movies with Woody Harrelson. Movies with Vince Vaughn. Movies with Richard Jenkins. One of the most underrated character actors of our times. I'm not here as a representative of hard bodies. Movies with Natalie Portman. Musical guest Keanu Reeves, Winona Ryder, Anthony Hopkins. Juliette Lewis. Juliette Lewis. Can I get a Juliet? A Tom Hardy. We found him. We found him, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. We got there. Respectable. How can one person know all this about movies? Me when I know two actors who have been in some of the movies I've seen in my life? I don't know. It's very difficult. It's very tough. I don't know how he does it. But it, you cannot convince me that either you're all fake and I'm the only real person and I live in a simulation designed to please only me. Probably in the service of like my brain outputs like truly random electrical signals that the AI can use to like run some kind of fucking computer or something. Or the people who do movie to movie and the people who do Cine to Nerdle are connected, all right? Because this is just too many references to Mank close together. So Dirty Grandpa, Robert De Niro, Zac Efron, I mean, you can get to a lot of places from De Niro. Also has Aubrey Plaza. Also has, I don't know, one of those Emma Roberts, uh, Lily Collins type actresses who I never remember the name of. Who the heck's in man? Gary Oldman, Amanda Seyfried. Arliss Howard, Lily Collins. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, you're all fake. I'm the only real one, okay? Tuppence Middleton, of course. We all knew Tuppence Middleton was in that one. Charles Dance. John Churchill. Paul Giamatti. Paul Fox. Tom Simmons. Musical guest. Bill Nye. I, I'm not saying this in a bad way. He's had some work done, right? That's not the way that a man's face changes as he ages. The eyebrows don't get higher. They get bushier. Just look at Eugene Levy. No doubt. I mean, he looks good. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying <laughs> he does kind of look like he does kind of look like the Giga Chad. Yeah, sure. Well, when you're about to insult somebody, you have to start with a compliment. You have to say he looks good. 
I mean, he's probably like 73. Have you seen the average 73 year old? He's doing okay. He does look kind of scared. Who said he looks scared, man? He does kind of look scared. He looks scared, but he's, he's, oh, he's like holding it together. He's like, I can't be scared. My kids are here. He's scared because you snatched his fit. I don't even know what that means, okay? And no, I didn't. I'm not wearing a bow tie. Stuart, why am I still scrolling? They don't make guys like this anymore. If you called the LAPD in 1941, this guy's coming to your house. Whatever happened to this kind of guy? This guy used to make up 58% of the Major League Baseball Association. Now you just don't see him anymore. He plays a cop in like a period piece and that's it. They all have beards now? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway, where am I going with this? Got to get to fucking Robert De Niro. Do I got it today? You, you puffed the magic dragon fucker when you milk me? A little better? Yeah. Okay. Okay, fucker. You just got out of the circle of trust, fucker. You look more like French Stewart. That is definitely true. So, I don't know who Lily Collins is, but I know from yesterday she was in some overblown, probably like $500 million budget Disney production. So we go to Lily Collins, and then we just scroll down until we find it. She was in Okja. Okay, respect earned again. Mirror, mirror. That's what I was looking for. Um, she was in freaking Tarzan? Really? Oh, because Phil Collins is her dad. So uh, there's got to be a way. Hang on. I got something here. It's like mirror, mirror. I'm taking too long. I don't know why I'm scrolling so much. Also, what a great picture of Sean Bean. Holy cow. What is he like 27 in this picture? It's amazing. Two, Julia Roberts. That allows you to get to the Oceans films. Maybe we could just get there via Valentine's Day, which gives you to Bradley Cooper, which gets you to... Why was I going to Bradley Cooper? Oh, because of the Silver Linings Playbook. Because of Silver Linings Playbook. Robert De Niro. Two... Dirty Grandpa. Okay, it's not that bad. Gary Oldman, The Courier, Dermot Mulroney, Dermot Mulroney. Short as possible is always two, though. It's just like, this is a rare two where I know both of their names. Lily Collins doesn't equal Lily James. Yeah, I know, but like, Lily Collins... Emma Roberts and Lily James are the same person in my head. And I think one of the reasons that happens is because, like, Lily Collins was in Mirror Mirror, which is like a Cinderella remake, but quirky. And then Lily, who's the other one? Lily Collins, Lily James? Lily James was actually Cinderella? In the Cinderella remake that came out in like 2015. Like it's, it's fucking confusing, man. Lily James is Cinderella in the movie Cinderella. Yeah. See, it's tough. Where does Emma Roberts fit into this? I don't know. She's just collateral damage. <laughs> Which starred Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I digress. 
Lily Collins is also an Okja. Now you're just trying to confuse me. No, she, no the frick she isn't. Mass Effect 1. Mass Effect 2. Metacritic score 78. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mass Effect 3. <laughs> Mobile Suit Gundam Operation Troy. She's working for the damn DARPA. Um, I have no idea. Armored Core 5. You two are the... What's up with all the creep shots, you pervert? <laughs> you two are the only ones I can trust with this information. Is this an Earth Defense Force game? That would explain the creep shots. Earth Defense Force... 4 point... 2025? L2 plus L to boost. Original release, 2010. Zone of the Enders 3. Developed by Platinum. Okay. This is Vanquish. Oh! I know all those 7 out of 10 Platinum games from the 2000s. That's because I played Anarchy Reigns and I was like, who the fuck is this guy? What's Anarchy Reigns? Anarchy Reigns is um, the bizarre arena combat game made by Platinum that like combined all of their games into one cinematic universe. That was mostly noteworthy because it was $40 instead of 60. So even though it was like a five out of 10, we were like, oh, it's a seven. And I respect there's a room for, for fives and sevens and budget games and stuff like that. I love that. Give me more, more sixes over more nines, bro. Any day of the week. Don't actually, nines are pretty good. But I, I'm fucking sick of eights, okay? I'm done with eights. And an eight in games to me is like, it's competent, but it doesn't get the blood pumping. Who the f Give me something that's a complete train wreck instead then. Astria's a nine and a half. Astria's uh, quality cannot be determined with one significant digit. You need to put at least 15 decimal places in that one in order to, and maybe a fraction at the end of it as well. Game though classic. Astria's my game of the year. Bro, you better enjoy it while it lasts, okay? Because you're not playing any games that complicated in, like, six weeks, okay? So I, I hope you're getting in your strategy dice-building roguelites right now. Because pretty soon you're going to be like me. You're going to be like every single game should just be Clash of Clans. <laughs> this is Mass Effect. I told you, I'm the main character. Um, it's not Mass Effect. Maybe you guys do exist. I have no idea what you could be. Can I get some more text, please? I have no clue. Oh, it's fucking high on life. No wonder I didn't know what it was. High on life. Hey, it's me, the fucking, I'm the pickle Rick gun. Oh, don't fucking shoot them. Oh, you fucking shot them. What are you doing? Uh, it's, <laughs> whatever, it's too easy. It wasn't even funny. People will go plus two just because they don't like Rick and Morty. It's a fucked up, disingenuous world we live in. Is this, um, Shadow 
of Mordor again? Nope. It's fucking Bayonetta. Bayonetta 3. It's, what, the, what the fuck? Castlevania? Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2? Final Fantasy 14. Online. They're not, bro, they're not showing me anything. They're just revealing more background. Skip me. Give me, give me something real. Who the fuck is that? This is Black Desert Online too? Lost Ark, motherfucker. <laughs> Lost Ark makes me sick, man. Black Desert Online's actually pretty close. You could just tell from the armor, the hair, the faces, and the bodies. It was some kind of Korean-made MMO, which is fine. But, like, just don't ask me to know it, okay? It's all right. We'll get back the points on Game They'll Guess. No, you will not catch me playing Maple Story. You might be able to catch me playing OSRS. You will not catch me playing Maple Story, though. You'd hate it? Yeah, that's why it could be fun. Um. Maple stone. They, see, they don't even have it. How about RuneScape? RuneScape. Bro, that's not the logo. The logo is like eight stones with a sword, okay? It was released after 2001. It is <laughs> themes business. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Dark Souls 2. It's a third-person game that's newer than 2014. Okay. Super Mario Wonder. Oh, it doesn't exist. Haters will say it's fake. Super Mario Galaxy, which I believe came out on Linux, so that's probably a good guess. Um, something on the PC. Tomb, Rise of the Tomb Raider. It is a shooter adventure. Good to know it's later than 2015. Shooter adventure. Shooter adventure. Themes may involve open world action. That sounds like a good one. Third person shooter. Third person open world shooter. Mm. I'll have what she's having. Third person open world shooter. Third person open world shooter. Released, let's just say, within the last couple of years. How about The Evil Within 2? It's single player. It's a shooter adventure. I'm stunned we got to match the genres here. It's newer than 2017. It does involve action in all likely. It's not an open world, right? Okay, it's not an open world. It's not fantasy. It's not business. It's not sandbox. There, there's likely action involved and possibly stealth. That's because it's that game that everybody said was amazing and then they played it and they went, never mind. It is from the Dishonored studio. It is called, chat, help me out, Death Loop. Thank you. It's called Death Loop. The loop that eats people. Okay, it's not Death Loop, but we're getting lots of greens. You're right, that is first person. Good point, good point. It's a PS5, Xbox, and PC joint released. Psh, psh. Because it's fucking Starfield, bro. It's a mother freaking Starfield. Didn't come out on PS5. Of course, I should have known. We at least got the year. 
Let me get a clue. We got lots of greens, bro. From Remedy! It's Alan Wake 2! We got it! I told you we'd get you back on Game Dill Guess. I told you. I told you I was going to embarrass you, Barry. A two word. Movie, history drama from 2006. I'm going to know it. I don't know it yet, but I'm going to know this. An ambitious uh, is Marie Antoinette. <laughs> Saw someone say 1780 footwear, and I went, it's Marie Antoinette. Easy enough. An Austrian teenager marries the Dauphine of France. Mmm, problematic. I don't care if it is 1780. He shouldn't have been doing that, probably. I don't know. I don't really know history that well. We love Sofia Coppola, don't we, folks? We do. Sofia! Sofia lost in translation, her masterpiece, of course. The Virgin Suicide's also very good. Oft forgotten. People, oft forgotten, but very good. One of Kirsten Dunst's best turns outside of perhaps melancholia why is he speaking like donald trump bro that's aggressive that's just how i talk this is just how i talk he talks like me if i've been talking like this forever he started talking like that after he heard me talk. True, you're like 80? No, he's older than me. That's the fucked up part. It really do be your own. Next, you're going to say he copied going bald from you? Bro, listen. <laughs> he might have had that before me. This is some pre-World War I or during World War I shit. Because part of the Treaty of Versailles is that they didn't let them wear these helmets anymore. Which I get, because they do look dangerous. But, like, they also kind of look fucking sick. <laughs> they also look pretty cool. And they didn't do much better with the next helmets. Honestly, they should bring these back. Okay, this is... The 7th International Automobilistelung in Berlin. This word is too motherfucking long. Germans, explain yourselves. Oh, that's like eight words. Never mind. The Dordum Panzer automobile? Catch, catch me in this shit as soon as the spring pops, man. You, th you think convertibles are nice now? Imagine feeling the wind through your leg hair. It's like a damn lawnmower with a Tostitos scoop attached to it. Why didn't they just build like a Ford Fusion back then. They had all the power. <laughs> it is German font. You're, I told you, bro. It's German font. Okay, this shit is like 1912. Boom. 1906. I don't know. How would I know? It's a ridiculous question. It looks nice, don't get me wrong. So, like 1920? 1902, okay. It's got a... St oh, yeah! Dude, now I know this shit is like 04. I think we've even had this before. This is my era, man. This is what we used to play fucking Smash 64 on. Can you imagine? It's like an 8-inch screen. You got a split, four-player split screen playing Perfect Dark. It's no wonder our eyes are all fucked up, bro. 
So this is like 2004, 2002, fair enough. The king is dead. And I know the culprit. When did the king die? Well, Queen Elizabeth II had her golden jubilee. Jubilee, golden jubilee, didn't she, people? She did. When was that? I don't know. Last year. What's golden? 75, let's say. So, 1957. Okay, not that bad. I can live with that. Did he do Doppel today? It's so hard. Squeaks, is this a joke? Is it because Doppel never works anymore? It's been really hard for me to get a good score in Doppel because the website's been broken for two weeks. This is like the United Nations. This man is evil. I don't know. He might be a hero for all I know. <laughs> but he's got an evil vibe. Do you see that? Or do, is that just me? Can somebody tell me, just lie to me and tell me this man is evil? He's about to turn evil if he's not evil yet. It's 1964. 1958. Okay, I got my ass beat today. He's about to steal the Tesseract? Dude, you know what's fucked up? That might be why he looks evil to me. Does look like Stellan Skarsgård. By the way, what the fuck was going on in... The, it's been 10 years. Can we get an answer on this? You know in the second Avengers movie where it's telling Starsguard gets naked and dips himself in that like Asgardian pool? What, what the fuck were they doing with that, man? They just put that shit in the movie like a gratuitous nudie scene for all the MILFs watching the Age of Ultron and then never, never brought it back ever again? They needed to up their appeal with the female demographic. Well, if it worked for them. By the way, I'm here to, I'm going to go to bat for two multimillionaires, okay? I'm going to go to bat for uh, Chris Evans, and I'm going to go to bat for Taika Waititi. Why? It's, it's simple. Taika Waititi is getting dragged for doing an interview where he said he only did Thor Ragnarok for the money. Are you stupid? Of course he only did Thor Ragnarok for the money. And Thor Ragnarok is fucking good. So it's not enough that dude made like the best Thor movie. He also has to lie and be like, oh yeah, Thor was my passion project. Like he already did you a solid Thor boys. Now you want him for the rest of his life, he's got to be like, oh, my favorite movie I've ever done, my passion project, it's the movie where Thor meets the Hulk in the arena, okay? Like, just take the movie, it's good, and then go with it, okay? Same thing for Chris Evans. People are like, not Chris Evans, he gave like an interview eight years ago where he's like, I don't really like being Captain America, I'd rather make more interesting movies. People are like, no, Chris, don't say it. He was a great Captain America. Now, it's not enough that he was Captain America. He, he's also got to, for the rest of his life, be like, it was the honor of my lifetime playing Captain America. Bro, he already did you a solid, okay? He was a good Captain America. He didn't phone it in in the movies, unless they asked him to. People were like, we need a real super fan. No, you don't. You just need, a, you just need to log off. <laughs> Sorry, apparently I'm not playing the daily. I'm just on the regular. You seen Sunshine? I saw that shit on like watch-movies.gov when it came out. Some file sharing website named after an octopus or something. 
your ass was still positively zygotic. And it's good, okay? This is Los Angeles, 1995. O.J. Simpson has just been found innocent. Los Angeles. Put us right here. 1995. Ooh! I guess downtown is a better guess, but that's still pretty good. Take me back. This shit is like fucking Monaco. Monaco! Charles Leclerc crashing into a wall at three miles an hour, but also winning the hot lap in F1's worst race of the season. Monaco! Okay, all right. Um, I'll tell you one thing for free. This is 1991. This is 1993, and shit looks divine. And I'm just going to stick with Monaco because I don't have a better guess. Now, where the frick is Monaco, Samurai? Is it this one? There, Monaco! This is Monaco 1993. Mm, 1992. 1988. A summer street scene. A summer street scene in Coimbra, Portugal. All right. 7117. I'll take that. This is actually Brady Kachuk. Like, let's ignore the outfit for a second. Hockey fans, tell me I'm wrong. Ottawa Senators fans, come get your boy. He's caroling outside of the Woolworth GmbH in downtown Berlin. Well, I'm going to say that this is... Germany, circa, say like 1937, take it a little bit before the canonically accepted start of the Second World War, 1933. It is 1984 though, you're not wrong about that. Now, this is interesting. Kwanzaa. Sanyo. Selling some Swiss timepieces. BH Hirani Radio Service. I think this is like Nairobi. Circa 1986. Okay, that's the greatest geographical guess anyone's ever made. I was off by 13 years, but geographically speaking, you got to admit, that's... If I got it wrong, I was going to say unlucky. Now that I got it right, it's only fair for me to say that I'm a genius. I'm spitting out my cereal. Yo, what kind, though? This is Martin Scorsese. Drought, draft relief, drought relief? What I say when I've had too many fat tugs, am I right? London Transport apologizes. Unlimited travel on any bus, six dollars. This is really hard for me because if this was America, I would be like, this is photoshopped. Because this dude's definitely like a lawyer from 1979 and this dude is like he owns like an ice cream shop in Mississippi in 1922 but England is weird because they were like 
they kind of dressed formal longer than North America did. The lighting does make it look like there's two different dudes here, though. <laughs> well, they're two different dudes, obviously, but like this dude has been photoshopped in or this dude has been photoshopped in. Here's the thing, like a $6 bus pass, well, I don't know, is that, is that for one day? It's not $6, but a six pound bus pass for one day seems kind of expensive for what might be 1903. <laughs> this font is like, that's like an 80s font. This is like a Zeller's Cafe restaurant menu font. But this blocked font, this is more like, you know, extra, extra, Dewey beats Truman, read all about it. How much, how much? 30p for each paperback, two paperbacks on early buses from London Transport with many illustrations and rare early drawings. What the fuck does it mean, Basil? 30, 30p each, 30 cents for a book. Fuck it, bro. I'll tell you straight up. This is London, 1985. 1974. It is London, though. That's a tough one. Oh! <laughs> we have not crossed the 40,000 threshold in a while. Dude, I've been playing the Dulls for too long. It's almost 11 already. I should share it on Facebook. Okay. This is easy, man. Did I miss Factal? We're going to go back to it because apparently it works now. And maybe Doppel too. Winnipeg Jets drafted in the first round. Patrick Laine. New Jersey Devils drafted in the first round. Jack Hughes. Hughes, comma, Jack. Jack, comma, Hughes. San Jose Sharks drafted in the first round. Does he have to be drafted in the first round by the Sharks? Oh, he must be drafted by the selected team. Okay. They didn't have first round picks for like a long time. I'm going to say they got Logan Couture. Okay, you're a genius. Winnipeg Jets, Boston Bruins. Blake Wheeler. San Jose Sharks, Boston Bruins. That's a gimme. Marco Sturm. See, so you look like every member of the pra Impractical Jokers mixed together. Now, New Jersey, Ottawa, a little tricky. You got to go Anton Volchenkov for that one. San Jose, Ottawa Senators. You got to give me a quick little Danny Heatley. Winnipeg and Ottawa. See, that one's tossing me. What about someone who used to play for Atlanta? Danny Heatley! Danny he Marion Hosa? No, Hosa never played for... He played for Atlanta, but he didn't... Atlanta didn't play for... He, no, I got... Oh, I should have used Danny Heatley. Fuck, dude, I should have used Danny Heatley up here. That's tough. And New Jersey, Boston should be easier. But I don't know. Tell you what, I'll give you a quick Wayne Gretzky. Follow it up with a Dwayne Rollison. Let's see who we got here. Danny Eadley, of course, man. Oh, Taylor Hall. That's, that should have been a gimme. Lazar, huh? They didn't, Lazar beats out Volchenkov? How does that happen? Carlson makes sense. Heatley should have been our pick for this one. 
Curtis Lazar is actually playing really well this year. Listen, a lot of people who came to the Vancouver Canucks underperformed. It's easy for me to think that it's because they were bad, but it could also be because the Canucks were so bad. <laughs> Nate Schmidt, Curtis Lazar, Jay Beagle. Like, there are a lot of people that, you know, got signed to be role players and then played way below replacement. Maurice Richard, Homegrown Simpson stuff. Exactly. Wait, I haven't done movie grid, man. Oh, I saw someone say it's your nightmare. Yeah, this is my nightmare today because I have not seen a movie that Mia Goth has been in. But I do believe that she was in Infinity Pool. And she's in a one-word title movie that's called... Ma. <laughs> what is this one called? Ma Viola, something like that. Okay. Ethan Hawk, 2000 to 2023. We go uh, before sunset on that one. No, NL, that's the wrong one. That's the 1990. Shut the fuck up, you Rick Richard Linkladder non enjoyer. Before sunrise is the first one, before sunset is the second one. You piece of. Ethan Hawke, one word title, that's a gimme. Daybreakers. Ethan Hawke, thriller or horror. The Black Phone. Vera Farmiga, one word title, that's a gimme. The Departed, ignore the the. Thriller or horror. One second. She's also in Up in the Air. Released 2000 to 2023. She's in Insidious or Annabelle or Sinister or whatever the fuck those movies are called. Sinister. What's it called? <laughs> the Conjuring. Thank you. Thank you. The Conjuring. I'll just be honest with you. I was not going to get X and Pearl. I just don't know them. I should know them, but I just don't know them. Before midnight, really more more play on before midnight than on uh, before sunset. It's listen. I'm not trying to be a hater. The important part is they're all amazing. Doppel. Holy cow, you're right. Doppel's back. This is just making the elements bigger. <laughs> Footloose, I have no idea, but it's the 80s. I'm going to say it's 19... I'm going to say it's literally 1983. And this strikes me as a May movie. February, literally February 1984. Still, I mean, considering I wasn't alive, pretty good as far as I'm concerned. I want to dance with somebody. I'm going to say this in 1987, John. We take those. Just Dance on the Nintendo Wii, starring Who Let the Dogs Out, You Can't Touch This, Heart of Glass, Hot and Cold by Katy Perry. That's got to be a circa 2008. Andy, oh, that stings. <laughs> oh, that stings. This painting, Dance by Henri Matisse. 1966, 1910. I don't know art, just being honest with you. Elvis Dies of Heart Attack, 1976. 1977. Didn't do so well on the painting, but I'll take a 3841. Not too bad. And then back to Factal. Factal appears to be broken again. 
Who told me Fractal's good today? Oh no, it's back, it's back. It's just slow. I can't believe you told me Fractal's good today. And then it's like the most basic Twitch question of all time. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying how many times are we going to go through this? Best-selling video game franchises of all time. Guys, we're a multi-billion dollar industry right now. We're at the forefront of culture. We're dominating demographics. You still want it. You're like, the media recognized us. It's embarrassing. Come on. That being said, <laughs> we know FIFA is going to be up there. Tetris will always surprise you. What the hell is we? Throw up a Grand Theft Auto. Give me a Minecraft. Give me a Call of Duty. Let's see how we did right off the bat. Tetris is number two. FIFA's not on there. Grand Theft Auto Call of Duty on there. Grand Theft Auto Call of Duty on there. Okay? You know what? The Sims. Even normies were playing The Sims. I didn't even see Pokemon. Pokemon should probably be in the number one position. Pokemon. Sims. Mario. Zelda. Madden. Pokemon and Mario. We got all three. We got all five, ladies and gentlemen. Call of Duty. Tetris. Pokemon. Grand Theft Auto Mario. Grand Theft Auto. Tetris Pokemon. Mario. <laughs> no, no, no. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on, I could do this, okay? I'm doing the, the math in my head. Mario can't be here. Obviously, it can't be there. Grand Theft Auto number one. Tetris, that can't be. It can't be. It can be. Then you go Mario, Call of Duty. No, it can't be. You give Call of Duty, Mario. No, it can't be. So either Mario or Call of Duty has to be number one. Math is crazy. Okay, call, oh, it can't be Call of Duty. It has to be Mario. Mario has to be number one. Mario, Tetris, Pokemon. Call of Duty. Grand Theft Auto. Bro, math is insane. I feel like the, uh, this, no, I, I did fine in math that I have appreciation for math, scholastically speaking. But no teacher was ever able to explain to me why math is important. Bro, this is why math is important. We knew one piece of information about three things, and that illuminated five different facts for us. That's crazy, dude! You illuminated, you, with, with one photon of light, you lit up a room. That's logic, not math. Bro, math is just applied logic. That sounded smart. Is it right? I don't know. Math isn't real, bro. Math is just something that we invented symbologically to represent things that exist in the physical world, okay? It's all logic. It's, it's logic on top of logic on top of logic on top of logic. It's not like the number two fucking exists in nature. We invented it. <laughs> 